Let's talk about AES and why it is considered one of the better encryption standards in existence. I mean, it's right there in the name. AES is the Advanced Encryption Standard. But why this algorithm and not one of the many competing algorithms out there? AES was developed because the US federal government needed something better. In the late 70s, the feds were using DES, or the Data Encryption Standard, as their go-to encryption. Now, DES uses a 56-bit symmetric key cipher design, and it was considered secure enough in the 70s, and it was still frequently being used into the early 2000s. But as computer power increases, so does the need for stronger encryption. It got to the point where DES could be broken by a powerful computer of the times in just 22 hours. So the hunt was on. The US government announced a public competition to create a better encryption standard than DES. Now keep in mind, this encryption couldn't just be very secure because that could mostly just be accomplished by using ridiculously larger encryption keys that are more bits in length. Again, remember, DES was only 56 bits in length. But the encryption and decryption times of this algorithm also had to be very fast and the algorithm had to be completely open source so that there's no reliance on security through obscurity. You don't ever want that to be one of the primary strengths of your encryption, to be the fact that just nobody knows it because it's only a matter of time until some people find out and then your encryption is gonna be broken. And more importantly, it has to be open source to make sure that there's no backdoor weaknesses that are built into the encryption to be maliciously taken advantage of later. So out of the dozen or so submissions, the Rheindahl cipher emerged victorious, which was the original name of AES. Uh, it took on that name in 2002 and then became really popular in 2003 after the NSA, one of the brightest glowing government agencies, approved AES for encrypting top secret government information. So now AES it has made it to the top. It has become the industry standard for encryption used by corporations, the government, and you. I mean, if it's good enough to encrypt information about aliens and the misappropriation of tax money, it's good enough for encrypting your emails, right? So how does it actually work? AES uses a 128-bit symmetric block cipher. So it takes 128 bits of a message, uh, or a file, you know, whatever kind of data that you're encrypting, and it encrypts it into 128 bits of cipher text with a key that can be either 128, 192, or 256 bits. Uh, so the more bits that the key is, the more secure it is. Although don't feel bad if your browser or application that you're using has only implemented AES encryption with 128 bit key sizes because that's still pretty hard to brute force. There's literally a one in two to the 128th power chance of guessing that correctly. And to put that in perspective, you could have 10 million computers that are all guessing 10 trillion different keys per second, which by the way, only supercomputers can really do. You need about 10 petaflops to get that many AES checks a second and it would still take them 107 billion years to guess every possible combination. So AES-128, still pretty secure. Uh, now what AES does when it encrypts your message, um, you of course start out with plain text data, which could be, like I said, text, video, audio, whatever. And then you convert it to hex, or you can convert it to binary. Um, either one, it's just, you know, it's fairly easy to divide them up into blocks. Hex is just easier to write. Uh, so our message is then split into 128 bit blocks uh, that have four rows and four columns. And each entry is going to be two of those hex characters, which represents one byte. Um, so it's gonna be for 16 bytes in total or 128 bits. Now remember that this block size is always going to be the same each chunk that it's taking out of your message. It's the key size that can be different with AES. Um, so next, there's going to be a certain number of round keys that are created from the cipher key that you created um, when using the AES key schedule. So we'll go over what the round keys are in a moment, but you can think of them like a bunch of mini keys that are just derived from the original one 
except each of these keys are not that small. They are each 128 bits. And we're basically going to do a for loop over each of those different blocks that were broken out from your original data. So for each block of 16 bytes of data, combine it with one of the round keys by doing a bitwise XOR between the bytes of the block and the bytes of the key. Then we're going to do some math on that block input uh, combined with the key to further obscure it because if this was just raw hex combined with an encryption key, it would probably be pretty easy to sort the message out. So the math that we're gonna end up doing is a byte substitution. And then we're going to mix up all of the rows and columns. So first we're going to shift the rows and then mix the columns. The byte substitution, that's going to convert every byte into a different value. So AES is going to define a table of 256 different values, which is the amount of possible values that a byte can store. So essentially, each value of the block is going to be changed to another one, and the function ensures that no byte is going to be replaced with itself with the same value. And this function is basically just a lookup table, so the implementation uh, is actually very fast, again, as far as encryption and decryption times go. So then each row is going to be rotated to the left by an incrementing number of bytes. Uh, so zero for the first row, one for the second, uh, two for the third, and so on. Uh, these bytes will also wrap around. So uh, for example, the 40 or the 65 rather is going to be put into the position of the 68. And these are going to move over to, so basically the 61 is going to be uh, in the place of the 20 and the 64 would be in the place of the 74. And then finally, the mix columns, which is the most complicated step, but it involves taking each column of the state array and then replacing it with a new column that is computed by a matrix multiplication. So it's basically just a lot of manipulation, which essentially changes all of the values of the bytes and then changes all of their positions around to really jumble up all the data. And it would already be really hard to undo this, especially since the keys that you create at the beginning are kept a secret and those are essential to properly doing the algorithm. Uh, but these mixing up steps, these are gonna be repeated a number of times and that's gonna be determined by the key size that you choose to use. So 128 bit keys are going to repeat the process for 10 iterations by default. 192 bit keys are gonna repeat it for 12 and 256 bit keys are going to repeat it for 14 rounds. And during each round, a different round key is then going to be plugged into you. So the process repeats starting off with XORing and the result from the last iteration uh, with the round key. And then on the final round, the process is repeated except for the mix column step. And when the data needs to be decrypted, we just do the inverse of the math and the movements that we did during the encryption uh, for the same number of rounds. And of course, nobody knows your encryption keys, so they can't access the data that is protected by it, um, at least not through cryptanalysis, which is very important to remember. It doesn't matter if you're using AES with 128-bit or 256-bit keys because a hacker isn't going to attack the structure of AES itself. It's impossible to break that, at least until general-purpose quantum computers become a thing. So what a hacker is going to do is they're going to attack the weakest link in your security, which is either going to be an attack on the implementation of AES, if it's you know, being implemented in software improperly and you know, whatever application you're using, or through a side channel attack, if the hacker has hardware level access uh, to your system, they might be able to figure out uh, what the encryption keys are from the cache. But what a hacker is realistically most likely to target is the password. So it doesn't matter if you're using 128 or 256 bit key sizes, if your password doesn't have a significant amount of bits of entropy, then guessing it is going to be easier. And if you're not using a password manager, I can pretty much guarantee that your password doesn't have very much entropy because Here's an example of one that just has 128 bits of entropy. So this is you know, roughly the same as the smallest key size that you can use in AES. 
and it's still 21 characters long with upper and lower alphanumerics and symbols. So a strong password and reputable implementation of AES, uh, that's all you really need. Don't go trying to create your own crypto libraries and your data is gonna be safe.